Good afternoon, everyone. I am Donna Miller, president and founder of C3 Workplace. So delighted that you are able to join Kelly, Lauro, and I for our, I've been calling this our webinar on webinars, which is basically what it is. Um, so just before we jump into the content, uh, a little bit of housekeeping. You are all muted, um, but you do have both a chat window and a Q&A window. And we really want to encourage you to use those windows and to ask us your questions as we go along. Uh, Kelly and I are pretty darn good multitaskers. Um, and so we'll monitor those windows and we will seek to get your questions answered as we go. Um, uh, if it's a question that we know we're going to cover later in the uh, presentation, be patient because we'll wait until that part of the presentation. Um, um, we are recording this, so you will also have access to the recording. Um, and I guess to start us off, uh, let me tell you a little bit about us, if, if you don't know. Uh, for the last 25 years, 2019 is our 25th year in business. Wow! You'll hear more about that. Um, so over the last 25 years, we've helped thousands of companies to start and grow. We do that in a number of ways. We provide on-demand office space, co-working out of uh, two locations. We also provide virtual assistance, bookkeeping, and we provide education and business growth advisory services. Um, so the C3 uh, stands for Connect, Collaborate, Community. I really believe companies can be a force for good. I believe in the power of collaboration. Um, and we are teaching other business owners how to harness that power. Um, I believe that a rising tide lifts all boats. And when I grow and you grow, that growth not only is good for us, but I believe that that growth spills into the communities that we live in. Um, and I'm on a quest to help people build companies that are a force for good. And dare I say, help you build a company that, wait for it, runs without you. What a concept. So anyway, today Kelly Loro and I are going to talk to you about webinars. Obviously you've all participated on them because here you are on a webinar. Um, and one of the unique uh, things about C3 Workplace is as we've grown, um, you know, I mean there was a time when I sat at the front desk and I did everything until that became clearly just a recipe for burnout. But as we have grown and as we have addressed some of the challenges of growing a company, we then have more, more to bring to the table for our clients. And I think, you know, Kelly, you'd probably agree that this is one of those things we've learned to do pretty well and now we can help other people do it. Yes, this is something that uh, we find really great value in. Uh, We'll go over the variety of ways in which uh, that is the case, but um, we've just found it is a way to connect. That's, you know, in our name, it's one of the things that are most important to us, and that's one of the big reasons why we're, you know, we, we do these on such a regular schedule, and we make sure to make the time, because it allows us to connect with everybody in a different way. Right, and we'll share with you some of our things that we have learned, our best practices, and make it um, executable and scalable, which is a theme, I think, for any business that's trying to grow. And, and in all truth, uh, our target market tends to be uh, B2B companies. So what we talk about may or may not apply to people who are selling um, maybe something on the internet. So, so let's jump in. Um, hang on, let me just flip this over. Okay, so I always like to start with why, and you know, sometimes it's obvious, um, but Kelly, when we were preparing for this webinar, you did some research, and we were kind of amazed to see the statistics out there on webinars. So talk to us a little bit about that data that you were able to gather on webinars. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, first off, you know how it is in the business world. There's always the shiny object. The next thing everyone is focused on, you know, what's new, what's exciting. And with webinars, they seem to be a good constant. Um, you know, everyone's always talking about live streaming or they're doing podcasts or they're doing lots of, lots of things, which are also great for your business. But um, 
what I found, uh, which was actually a great, um, you know, it was uh, effective methods of lead generation that InsideSales.com did. And some of the stats I found you'll see here. So 73% of B2B marketers and sales leaders say webinars are the best way to generate high quality leads. That's a huge amount, <laughs> that's a huge percentage. Um, and they are targeting specifically the marketers and the sales leaders because these are the people that are, you know, in the field, they're doing this every day. So they know what is working and what is a constant for them? What's bringing in leads? What's bringing them connections to their target audience? How are they reaching people? And they also said that over 60% of professional marketers are currently using webinars as part of their content marketing programs. So um, as great as it is that there are so many options to connect, you know, via social media, podcasts, all these other things, webinars seem to just be one of these, you know, uh, solid <laughs> foundations for being yeah. able to connect and for allowing people to get their message out, get their message across, and to teach and connect with their target audience in a way that isn't always possible in other ways. I agree. And, you know, the truth is, I think all of us who are in the B2B world, um, we are seeking to position ourselves as thought leaders because we all know the sales process is no like trust but the truth is you have to take it over the finish line which is no like trust try so for us doing webinars has been a aligned with our commitment to teaching what we know we want to get out there and we want to share as much information as we can and help all of you to be as successful as you can but it is about thought leadership it is a there is a low barrier to getting your word out there um, I think you know these statistics that you've shared on webinars I think webinars to a great extent feed into the whole uh, video is is the king of content right now um, mm -hmm. You, we have to all be developing content. You will talk later about how to cross-purpose that content. Um, but also, it's a tremendous list-building opportunity. They're inexpensive. Uh, we find, again, we'll talk more later, um, it's, it's a good way to um, get your name out there on your social media sites and give people a reason to register to share their information with you. As we all know, when you're scrolling through social media feeds or you're reading your email, we're all looking for touch points and we're looking to expand our reach. Webinars are a pretty easy way to do that. Um, and like anything else, anything is easy if you know how to do it. But when you don't know how to do it, it seems a little intimidating. So we'd like to take some of the intimidation out of the process today. So, so the why for me, um, Kelly is great on data and she's got all those statistics. I think in, intuitively I knew that. And for me, it was about having a platform for collaboration. And we'll talk about that later as well. And it's about positioning myself as a thought leader and teaching what I know. That's kind of at the core of why I do what I do. Um, so that is a little bit about the why. Um, now, I want to talk, before we get into the um, logistics of it, this to me is what I often liked. I like to refer to this Venn diagram as um, the success triangle because whenever you're doing anything, you have to know who your target market is. We, we said before, we work with business owners. We live in the B2B realm. The truth is we have to know our who we're going to be talking to because we have to deliver content that's important to the people who we're going to be in front of. So... Always, I encourage people, and this comes straight out of the Earn More program, to look at your client DNA or your prospect DNA or building that avatar of, if I got 10 more of these clients, my, my business would be doing really, really well. And that's a combination of demographics, those are hard facts, psychographics, what are hopes, dreams, and fears. Maybe you're on this webinar today because it's a little bit intimidating for you, and maybe we can help take some of that away. So if you can find the intersection where demographics, psychographics, and events drive a need, I'm telling you, that's where the money is. So 
it could be something like we we know we have um, um, family law attorneys or financial planners and they want to be in front of people of a certain age those are demographics maybe a certain income those are demographics um, who are in a situation that they no longer want to be in that is keeping them from their dreams that's your psychographics and then they may end up in a divorce so I mean where you where those three things meet is great for a financial advisor who's dealing with maybe women over the age of 50. So you really have to always, anytime you start any marketing initiative, you have to look at what is your sweet spot, what are the demographics, the psychographics, or the events that can drive a need for what you're doing. Um, and the other thing about this is once you figure out who these people are, that's your target market. You want to do this same exercise for your referral sources and for your circle of influence people because that is where the money happens. So we want to know who our clients are and then we want to take that up a notch and we want to know who our referral sources are. Those are the people that we want to collaborate with. Those are the people that can really expand our reach. Um, it may be chambers, it may be associations, it may be uh, trusted advisors, but getting clear on what those two groups look like um, is really going to put you ahead of many people in as far as being able to leverage the activities that you do and speak directly to the people that you need to speak to in a way that will really connect with them. And in all of our marketing, you know, Rachel and I did a webinar, I'm losing track of days, I think it was Tuesday, this is my third webinar of the week, um, and we talked about touch points. Marketing is about touch points, and it may used to have taken three to five touch points to create a call to action. Well, that's no longer the case. It's seven, 11, 13, and in my opinion, I think that's gonna grow. So, okay, done ranting. <laughs> No, it's really important stuff yeah. because especially um, with C3 Workplace, I do a lot of, uh, you know, the foundational and the functional um, jobs that need to be done in setting up webinars or getting people prepared to do these kinds of things. And we always run into this issue with clients where they want to do a webinar, but there's so much, you know, additional, you know, prep work that needs to be done that isn't being done. So if you don't know those details, you don't have that information, it just makes it harder going forward. Um, having that foundational information is pivotal. You know, it's super important to making sure that your voice is reaching the ears of the people you want to reach. <laughs> right. And I often say, you know, if you're not clear on your target market and if you're one of those people that introduces yourself and when I say to you, who's your target market and you say to me, small and medium sized businesses, okay, you know me well enough. My eyes are going to roll back in my head and I'm going to say, that's like trying to boil the ocean and it's really pretty impossible. So, um, Kelly, let's talk about some of the how-tos. And this gets into, you know, this is really your area. And here at C3 Workplace, we kind of divide and conquer. We all try and stay in our lane of what we're good at. And I'm not the person who's all that good at detail anymore. So Kelly, talk to us about the logistics of doing webinars. Okay, yeah, no problem. Um, really, number one is having a platform on which to do it. <laughs> because that, obviously, without that, you won't be able to do it. Uh, here at C3 Workplace, our preferred platform is the Zoom platform, which you are seeing in action. It's very easy to set up. It's very intuitive. Um, there are a lot of capabilities that we don't use, you know, a lot of things that, you know, are, are available. Um, but it, it's simple. The customer support is great. Um, and you're, easy, you're very easily able to get your PowerPoint, your message, you have video capabilities. That is a huge, huge advantage. Um, you want to be able to connect with people with your face. You know, we're still human. No matter how digital we get, we need to see and we want to be able to visualize what's going on. We want to see who we're talking to. We want to see what they're talking about. So being able to see video, being able to see PowerPoints, um, that's, you know, step number one. Make sure you have the proper tools in which to reach the market that you want. Um, next would be preparing the actual conversation and the topic of what you're going to have. So one is you have to have a topic. Um, and we'll get into detail on, you know, those kinds of 
ideas that you'll need to have that will position you as a thought leader. But once you have that, you want to make sure that um, you know you have an outline, conversation, touch point. So you have something that you can follow to make sure that you stay on on target and that the conversation flows in a way that will make sense for everybody watching, listening, following along. Um, ideally, you want to have a conversation with a couple people. It's not you know you can have a webinar on your own. However. It's just a little easier. It's just a little bit more perhaps entertaining <laughs> if you have a few people who can add their input, input that can have uh, more of a back and forth, more of a conversation. So you're not just monologuing. You know, it's not just you the whole time having to fill all the space with your thoughts, which you know are valid and they're great. But it's 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 a little easier on you, and it's just uh, better for the flow if you are able to get somebody in who. Um, perhaps complements your business or who can add some uh, expertise into what you're talking about, it's always valuable to have uh, more than one person if you can. Right. Um, definitely, if I can, can I just jump on. in there a minute? And the other thing that's really important about that is we talked about why you do these and you, you do these to position yourself as a thought leader to expand your reach. So when you can, the, the other piece about doing it with more than one person is that now you're combining your reach. So if uh, the webinar I did on Tuesday with Rachel Durkin at Paradigm Marketing, we combined our reach. So we both marketed the program. We had one set of you know um, graphics and whatnot that we would use to market it. And so we were able to double our reach. So that's the other reason to um, have more than one person. Um, the last one is sometimes, well, I'm, it's not the last one, but it's the last one I'm thinking of right now. Um, sometimes the topic that you're choosing to talk about is a little dry and you have to kind of sexy it up with <laughs> things that will bring it some more interest. Um, and it's, and sometimes you're delivering information that people need to hear, but may not want to hear. So this concept of having more than one presenter has multiple reasons um, about it. And so, Kelly, I just wanted to jump in with that, uh, with that additional perspective. No, that's, that's great. It's a point I didn't make is, um, yeah, the combined reach, having this uh, strategic partnership with somebody, it just boosts your efforts, their efforts, and it's a win-win-win really for everybody because uh, you are, are getting your point across, your, your partner is, and then your audience is getting a, a lot of information, a lot of helpful and valid and really important information that they'll need. Um, the last point I was going to make for this one, for the how-to, is to make sure that you include question and answers. And I had said earlier that webinars are so uh, you know great for a business because it allows you to connect on a, a bit more personal level with a wide group of people you know all at once so you want to try to make it as collaborative and um, as conversational as you can so that's why we are always promoting you know if you guys have questions shoot them out put it in the chat room because uh, in the chat window because we want to be um, having this conversation not just between the two of us but with you as well and that's a really important part that you need to always incorporate into your webinars is try to make it as conversational, as collaborative as is possible for what you're working on. Awesome. So I, when I think about how to, the other thing that we're really good at at C3 Workplace because we know how to scale is uh, we have gotten to the point where we have an entire um, routine list of tasks that have to happen when we do a webinar. Um, this is project management and it makes it replicatable. It makes it you know, easy to scale and uh, it makes it easy to delegate if you need to. So you can look at all the different things that need to be done as far as a webinar. Um, and the first part of the planning is, is like Kelly said, planning not only what the topic is, but how is that of value to your target audience? So it, usually it starts with, can I solve a problem? Who wants to solve that problem? So the first part of your, um, your project uh, list is to plan the conversation. What are the points that you're going to cover? I mean, honestly, we do 45-minute webinars. You're not going to get much more than five points across really well. So 
don't try to cram a lot of data into the presentation. Really make it, you know, as you can see, our slides are, are pretty graphical and pretty visual, and the content is in the conversation. Um, so the first part of the planning is to um, decide what the, what's the problem you're solving? How are you going to name the webinar? Now, naming webinars is just as important as the subject line on your emails. It's one of the most important things you will do when you create a webinar. So let me just repeat that. The name of your webinar is just as important as an email marketing subject line. And there are websites you can go to to test and score that name. So we know that how to is a good, will always score pretty well. We know that three steps to will always score pretty well. So you have to message your, your content in a way that's going to have the greatest appeal when you market it. So that's also yeah. part of planning your messaging. Yeah, I actually have, um, I found what a lot of marketers had referred to the top six <laughs> for naming webinars. Okay. So as you said, lists, uh, numbers are always great. Top 10 ways to get a webinar. Uh, okay. <laughs> lists are great. How-tos are great. Uh, again, positions you as a thought leader and um, allows you to instruct and, and show people how to do something. Um, using the term 101 is always good. So it, it, that's especially good for people who are just um, who might aren't as knowledgeable about whatever you're talking about as you are. So you, you're getting in on, on sort of the ground level if you need, and then you can build up from that. Um, using terms classes, trainings, and workshops is always good because it shows that you're going to get a little bit more in depth with the information. Maybe there's going to be um, some actual training that the people will be uh, you know involved in. Um, number five was the word new. People like that. New data reveals webinars are greater. <laughs> and then uh, number six one, this is another one that's a good buzzword, is the word trends. So saying, oh, the new trend in webinars. And, um, you know, it's getting, it gets people's attention and it gets their interest. Excellent. On your webinar. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and then from there, our planning goes into kind of logistical execution, all the little steps that have to happen, setting up the webinar, get, we have a web page for events, so it has to be listed on our web page. Um, but the other big part that is on your task list um, and your project list is how are you going to get the word out there to people to attend your webinar. Now, each of you uh, came to us via a number of different ways. And you will also notice that one of the features of Zoom that we like is that when you registered for the webinar, we can ask you how you heard. So in the, in the context of building data, and, and I always try every single thing I do, I try to get the maximum return out of it. So is there something I can add on to something that's already happening that brings more value? So knowing how you heard about us is really important. Um, so Kelly, talk to our audience a little bit about some of the ways that we market webinars um, that they can as well. Sure. Um, first up always is to get it on your website and make sure that it's prominent there, either on your calendar, your events page, uh, somewhere pretty visual where people will be able to see what you're talking about. They'll be able to click on it and they'll be able to register for it uh, as easily as possible. Um, after that, we tap into uh, our social media channels, obviously. We have schedules that we follow, for the most part, um, on when to post, how often to post, uh, what to say. And as you see on the screen here on the slide, um, using the term register to attend live or receive the free recording is, is a beautiful thing. <laughs> if there's one thing you take away from this webinar, that's the one thing, because that's the list building language. Yes. Um, what and we find is um, our webinars are free, and we do have a question about free or not free. We do find that um, it's about a 50% attendance rate, but um, because they're free, but obviously we're, we're always getting new people and we're building, we're filling our sales funnel with people that we can engage with. Yes, and again, while I was um, poking around, I, another stat I found is about 26% of people actually um, register with the intention of not watching it live because they want to watch the recording, which is totally fine. Right. Um, really, the registrant list is, is where your 
where, where the gold is, where the information is that you want. Um, attendees, you know, attendee list is great. Um, you know, you want people to, to get in, but there already is a built-in percentage of people who aren't going to be there live. And that's fine. And that's why you want people to be able to get this information no matter what. That's why you have to record it and send it out after, which we get to. Um, so anyway, back to uh, spreading the word. Uh, once you tap into your social media, you want to make sure that you share it, that if you have someone who's presenting with you, they're sharing it with their audience. And then uh, another step we have is we have some affiliate sites um, that will that we can post our events to. So groups we're a part of, um, chambers, really anything that you know we're involved in that you can post your own events on. Even sometimes like NewJersey.com or those um, you know local sites or towns, county sites. Post them there too because people are watching. You know people are looking in to see what's going on and they're interested. And we get a lot of uh, registrants from from those outlets as well. So really you want to cast a wide net because you want to get people interested that you might not be connected with at the moment. And, um, you know, because you're going to record it and you're going to send them that information, it doesn't matter if they're not available that day because they can get your information regardless and they'll be able to watch it. Right. And, and the other thing is, one of the reasons you want to create this project management and this task list is I always find the, the most um, the events that are executed most successfully are those that use a timeline. Now, the truth is, more than half of our registrants for most of our webinars happen two days before the webinar. We usually watch our registration double two days before the webinar. However, we plan our webinars literally three, four, and five months in advance. Um, and the reason we do that is, A, we want our event page on our website to really present value to people. And when they come to register for one event, we want them to see what's coming up in the future. Again, positioning ourselves as thought leaders. But also, if you have enough of a timeline, you know, like Kelly said, you can post this on nj.com. You can post these on your tap into networks and your patches. Those websites that are all very well traveled, um, you can list events on there for free. Um, the other thing we do is um, we have several meetup groups that we are uh, either hosts of or participate in, and you can post these events on meetup. So as Kelly said, it's about casting a wide net, and, and you would want your webinar collaborators and partners to be doing the exact same thing. Um, the truth is, if somebody sees your same webinar 15 times, so what? It takes 7 to 13 touch points to get somebody to move to a call of action. So we have found um, getting it out there as much as you can and as far in advance as you can is uh, very helpful. And um, we do find, I don't know, Kelly, would you agree? We do find for us, and again, your market might be different, Facebook is the social media platform that seems to convert to webinar registrants the most. Yes, and uh, part of the reason of that is we kind of do um, twofold. So we post, uh, you know, updates and we link back to our website, but we also create an event page. So right. right. You know, Right, so you can, right, you can create an event page on, and, and the truth is, once you do this stuff once, it's really pretty easy, and you, you simply, this is the stuff that when it's on that project, we happen to use a project management software called Asana. If you're using a project management software, which we recommend, and Asana is actually free, you can assign it to other people. So it becomes very routine, and if you're doing these pretty far out in advance, um, when you know, the gals here are posting on outside sites, they might be posting two or three webinars at once. So again, it's always about, you know, consolidating and reaping economies of scale when and if you can. Um, mm -hmm. Kelly, a, a question here. Um, is there a best day and time to host a webinar? What does uh, our research tell us about that? <laughs> from the research I've found, um, you between 11... 11 a.m. was one of the most popular ones, and then, then you know, uh, around lunchtime is, okay. you know, I guess the, the top one. Um, usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, my personal, <laughs> you know, reasoning on that is because it's the most well-attended workday. 
Tuesdays and Thursdays. A lot of people takes off, uh, take off Mondays and Fridays. Tuesdays, might, people might be coming in, you know, because they've been gone on a long weekend. Um, it just seems to be one of the most productive days. So uh, people are getting things done. During their lunch break is great because they can watch it while they're while they're eating. Or and usually, you know, keep it to half hour, forty five minutes, so that it's not, you know, like a two hour thing. Uh, most people yeah. are not yeah. going to stay that long. Yeah. Uh, you want to make it digestible and, and interesting, so that they want to watch it and they're going to learn something. It's not going to be a waste of their time. Gotcha. Okay, um, that's helpful. So. Getting the word out, it's, it's like, like every marketing initiative, um, know the problem you're trying to solve, know the target market that you are talking to, and use all the channels that are available to you in order to do that. I mean, we even have flyers in our workspace, and that helps too. So um, the time always flies by. So uh, Kelly, let's start to talk about what I think is, you know, a very important topic here is how do we maximize return? Um, and the truth is, I rant all the time about having financial literacy in your business. And this financial literacy applies to more than just knowing what your P&L looks like and how much cash you have in the bank. Um, it's things like, what's my most profitable service because that's where I'm gonna put my marketing effort in. And equally, it's what kind of return on investment am I getting on my marketing investment? Now, although webinars are pretty cheap to do because um, we pay, I think, $50 a month for the Zoom platform. Um, I've seen people do webinars with the Zoom meeting piece, which is less expensive, but I don't recommend them that there's a lot of controls you don't have. Um, and by the way, back to technology, we've done GoToMeeting. I've done so many different webinar platforms. Zoom is, is the easiest I've seen. Not only is it easy for us to do, but obviously it's easy for you to sign on to. Um, so I want to look at return on investment, which isn't just the hard dollars I spend. It's the time that me and my staff spend on executing and pulling this all off. Um, so I know because of, again, coming back to that project list and that Asana, I know exactly everything that goes into doing a webinar. Um, if you've ever read the E-Myth, the E-Myth talks about creating protocol. That's what we're doing here. That's scalability. So I have a very good sense of exactly how many hard dollars it's costing us and how much labor, because obviously you're paying your people or you're paying yourself. So to me, in order to maximize return, you have to know what it's costing you. So that's kind of foundational to understanding what your return should be. Um, but Kelly, talk a little bit about some of the other ways that we are maximizing return. Sure. Um, and this, again, goes back into our um, outline. It's something that we do pretty much every time, and it's, it's basically automated at this point. It changes, obviously, per webinar. But number one is you always have an ask. Um, at the end of the webinar, you don't want to just send people off with, you know, here's, here's what you have. Um, you want to have an ask. You want to have something to offer them so they can take advantage of all the information you just gave them. Um, this is super important because without it, you kind of leave people hanging. Um, you know, they, they came to your webinar or they listened to the recording because they found value in something that you have to say. So you want to be able to offer something to them, have some kind of ask, um, whether it's an offer for services or whether it's anything. It can be a discount. It can be whatever it is, but you want to have something there at the end so that people can can give back and participate in what they just had. They can ask for your help or they can download your ebook or they can do whatever it is that you know you're setting up. But that is, you know, golden rule. You have to have an ask because otherwise there's 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 it just kind of leaves people hanging. There's there's no follow-up. There's nothing else right. afterwards for people to take advantage of. Right. after listening to everything you just said and, and sharing your expertise with them. Right. And the um, thing is, the purpose of these webinars, if we talk about list building, if we talk about growing our audience, the truth is what we're trying to do here is we're trying to walk people through our sales funnel. Mm -hmm. 
So don't not have a conversation to get to the next step. So, you know, if webinar is your first label, well, what's the next thing? How are you going to walk them through your sales funnel and ultimately convert them to a client? So for every marketing activity we do, and I know we have some website people on, um, on this call, the truth is it's always about conversion. And, and conversion doesn't necessarily mean converting to a client. Conversion means getting buy-in to the next step in the buying process. So for me, I couldn't agree more, Kelly. But let's also talk about how we then kind of repurpose and use this content and, 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 and help walk people through that process. Sure. So um, after the ask, which you have on the webinar itself, you want to make sure that you're following up with everybody uh, usually an email follow-up is good where you can share the PowerPoint information that you had on the webinar or you can share additional information and have, um, you know, links to your ask or, or additional information that you need for them to walk through that funnel. Um, but for the actual recording of the webinar itself, that you should always be repurposing into a myriad, you know, myriad different ways. Uh, for us, we have our YouTube channel, um, so everything we do will go on there for a limited time so people can rewatch it. Um, we are able to edit snippets so that we can share it on social media. Again, positioning ourselves as thought leaders in specific areas, uh, we have, you know, video evidence <laughs> of how we do that, and we're able to share it with, with our audience and with new people, and they're able to see that, you know, we, we don't just talk, we, we, we walk too, you know, we, we do, we, we live out loud, we, we're, we're putting our money where our mouth is and you're able to show that to your audience and improve yourself as a thought leader. So everything that you do, always repurpose it. Um, like I said, post it, put it on your website, make sure that there's a place on your site, a page where people can go and see old webinars or old presentations that you've done. Because uh, you never know what will spark somebody's interest or what will catch them and make them say, oh, okay, this is why I want to work with them. Right. Uh, some, you know, a lot of times it's because of, you know, of personal reasons. It's because they like you and they like the way you speak and they like how you present. Uh, you, know, that you never know really what's going to catch someone's attention. So you want to make sure this content is repurposed as much as you can. Um, like I said, post on social media, make a YouTube page edit it down um, so that you can share it in small small bursts. And for speakers, uh, I know, Donna, you said uh, it's important to have a sizzle reel. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to um, show people who you are and why they should be working with you in your business. Oh, Donna, I can't hear you. Technical difficulty. Am I back? Okay. Um, so you want to send a follow-up email to everyone. And remember earlier we said register to attend live or receive the recording. So uh, when you send that follow-up, you're sending that to everyone. So now you're getting to speak to everyone, whether they were on the webinar or not. What I always like to do I, is, again, in the spirit of bringing value to the table, um, the webinar I was on this morning, I said to someone, I do not subscribe to the belief that knowledge is power. I subscribe to the belief that applied knowledge is power. So what we do in our follow-up emails is we, we say that and we suggest two action items. If you just take two action items away from what we've said today and you begin that process of, um, of you know, becoming a thought leader and using webinars, you will be further along than the person that watches a whole lot of webinars and does nothing with it. Um, you know, which is fine, but I think I'd rather watch Netflix. <laughs> um, so, um, my goodness, we're, we're almost out of time. Okay, so in the spirit of asking, and I do have, we, we, have, we will have time for a couple of uh, questions after this, um, we can help you create a strategy for webinars. Um, we can consult on strategy and content. We can help you create that project timeline that we talked about that they, you can then use again and again. We can train on platforms. Um, and the truth is, at C3 Workplace, we, we meet you where you're at and try to get you to where you're trying to go. So it may be that you want to do it yourself and you need a little bit of training, a little bit of guidance. We can certainly help with that. Um, 
if you're like, this is so not my thing, I want to delegate it, we can help you with that and everything in between. And we're happy um, as a participant in this webinar to schedule a complimentary consult on that. Um, if that's something you're interested in, you can email Kelly. Uh, we'll get you on the calendar and we'll do that complimentary consult. Um, but the other thing is, um, there's, there's a really good question here that I wanted to cover before we finished. And the question is, um, what kind of reporting and analytics should I look at after I complete the webinar? I know how I would answer that. Well, um, I mean, you need to have the registrant list. That's number one. You want to know who had interest in even signing up in the first place because there's something important there. There's something valuable that you need to make sure you're taking advantage of. Right. Um, you can see usually attendee lists, uh, which are also great. You can see how long people have watched. You can see, um, you know, that's maybe, what I was going to say. Yeah, I, where they. It's important to me that everybody stays. I yeah. mean, you know, the truth is, uh, if you've got a hundred people on a webinar, well, you have a few drop off privately. But for me, the most important thing about those analytics is. Um, are, am I engaging with people? So are they staying for the entire webinar? So, mm -hmm. so that's the thing that's really important to me. Um, Kelly, do we have? Um, did we leave anything out, or is there anything else that we need to cover? Oh, the other thing that we have for you, and we will send this in the follow up, is we have a tool. It's a checklist for hosting successful webinars. So we will send that out to you as as part of the follow up to this email, and it does run through a lot of what we said. And the other thing is, because you stayed to the end of this webinar, I want to tell you that if you have a topic that is applicable to business growth for B2B professional creative service firms, and you're interested in doing a webinar with C3 Workplace, with me, with Kelly, I have a speaker application, something else you might want to ultimately develop, and I would be open to exploring how we create a win-win-win. And the win-win-win has to be it works for you, it works for me, but most importantly, it works for our shared target market. So that's something else that we'd like to extend an invitation to all of you. Um, we do these webinars one or one, well, usually once or twice a month. This has just been a busier month. Um, and we find them, as we've said, very effective, and here you are, so it must be working. So um, we want to thank you all for joining us today. Kelly, any final words from you? Uh, again, thank you for joining us, and, um, you know, we're here to help, and we want to help. And like Donna said, we're always open to collaboration. That's another one of our C's, <laughs> so we live that out loud every day, and yeah. We that's know. why we're here and that's why we want to talk to you we want to help you because when you win we win and uh you know that's what that's what makes us happy it makes you happy and it's great and so we hope you enjoyed it and found some value in what we were talking about and that you're able to go forth and get your own web <laughs> create some action items and get it done um <laughs> and so anyway so thank you for joining us we do realize that this is often like fire hose level information if you think of questions afterwards but you don't want to do the consult no big deal you know us shoot us an email we're happy to answer the question so have a great rest of your day everyone and thank you so much for joining us thank you take care everyone